So why should you read the Hammer Slammers series by David Drake? This is military sci-fi, not something that you may necessarily be interested in. Uh, it's about a future, a relatively far future, a few hundred years in the future, where uh, mercenaries are a vital part of how interstellar warfare works. You know, several hundred years in the future, um, it transports hard or expensive. Logistics are hard and expensive, and um, the big hardware of war, the tanks and things like that, the artillery, they're expensive, and so insurance is expensive, um, and basically most worlds can't afford that level of in-house protection. Some can, many can't, so mercenaries fill the gap. Now, there's a few things, I guess, to say before uh, addressing some specifics about the series. One, this is a series that, the uh, this is the current collected edition, or I think the current collected edi edition, three volumes. I have one other sub-collection from here. The introductions are by people, well, Barry Mallsberg, David Hartwell, both respected writers and critics, Gene Wolfe, and the one I have upstairs is Jerry Pornell. We're talking big names, particularly Wolfe uh, and somewhat Pornell, and they would say that um, Drake is one of the best ever you know, top three or something military sci-fi writers ever. Uh, and that's a big kind of claim, I think. I'm, I, I put those words into their mouth, but I say that some of them do explicitly say he is the best. Uh, so he seems worthy of attention, particularly when you realise that um, military sci-fi is about things which we don't always associate with sci-fi. Um, I think it's Mallsberg who says, maybe it's Hartwell actually, who says that military sci-fi is um, is horror? Uh, that that is to say that very often or nearly always military sci-fi is something which is not about deadening our view of war via entertainment, which we can find, of course, can't we, with with cinematic depictions of violence, but instead heightening our sense of emotion and our reaction to war. Uh, maybe though, to simply say it's horror is too negative, and by that I mean too limited, restrictive a view. Um, and you turn instead to Wolf, who can point out the the fact that though he saw he served like Drake served, he, Wolf served in Vietnam. Others um, like uh, Mallsberg served in Korea. Um, you know, lots of these military sci-fi writers were soldiers at some point. But Wolf would say that along with all the horrendous waste, there was also something you found in war uh, if you wanted to. And I think that's often a, a widely reported experience of those who serve, that there is so much loss and horror, but it doesn't, and this is Wolf's point, it doesn't necessarily or automatically dehumanise people. Uh, it may even via the, um, what, what, what does Aeschylus call it, the pain falling drop by drop upon the heart, may bring awful wisdom. Um, and I think that's something which Drake is very good at, uh, bringing to our view the horror the you know genre horror and the specific horror of war, but also uh, some of the I, I don't really want, dare I say merits. Maybe I should just say the merits of the experience that some people manage to get out of it. Now the specifics. Well, Drake served in Vietnam. I said that he saw this as or well, he retrospectively a long time afterwards realised this was the therapy he never paid for. There is a real knowledge and understanding of what he's writing about. He is very good at imagining future tech, not in the predictive sense, but just in the imaginative, speculative sense. Super tanks with iridium armor and uh, kind of plasma shells. Um, the infantry all going around on sort of skimmers because they need to be fast. Uh, the ways that Intel tech, the way that hiding, the way that you know, essentially the a three D space um, uh, vertically oriented war, as well as the horizontally uh, um, oriented war, is presented, is really interesting and well done. The lethality of war is well done. The action is great. It's thrilling in the sense it's really engaging and you're like, whoa, what's going to happen next? But it's also horrendous, um, often very tragic, particularly when it impacts with the wider world, not just soldier to soldier, but, but in the wider world. The tone is, I think, perfect. It's a weird mix of downbeat and sombre, but also focused on the belonging to the regiment. And that's something Drake says, I think, in um, an essay of his on it, that... Uh, he was proud to ride with the Black Horse Cavalry, even though he basically saw his experiences weird, often pointless at a kind of military level and um, traumatic. The fact that he made friends there, the fact that there was a particular uh, brotherhood in his unit uh, was a real thing that he 
uh, and, and again, often observed by people, isn't it? So I think the fact that there is this mixture of tones, the ability to hold two tones together is a, um, a master, a master's move. It's something, for instance, the TV show The Wire is very good at, and it's a rare gift in a writer or, or any other kind of media, really. The characters, I'd say as well, are really memorable. Um, he's really good at taking what seems like I mean, almost a trope of a character. By that I mean a hammer is the... Uh, oh, how does it put it here? And is, it, is it on the back here? Uh, no, it's on, on the book I've got upstairs. You know, he, he was basically ruthless but loyal to his own. The idea that the Colonel Hammer, the founder of the regiment, is uh, a fierce professional uh, of uh, utmost skill and ability and focus and not a sentimentalist but also utterly loyal to his regiment uh, that's a trope but hammer is an incredibly memorable character who has uh, many memorable scenes say uh, joachim his bodyguard sociopath a narcissistic vain sociopath but where there, there's also uh, just occasionally something else going on there uh, danny the soldier the commander in fact a kind of senior officer with a conscience who struggles with the things he's seen because he can't he can't make the cost benefit work out in his head and many other characters as well these are uh, they're really interesting characters there are many recurring characters as well as one-off characters uh, these stories often inspired by history or myth and um, for instance the, the soldier and the warrior is that what it's called uh, there is one where uh, pretty clearly it's inspired by um uh, pretty clearly inspired by the iliad and the rage of achilles and that's a, a really special um, uh, story because there's something where yeah the warrior that's it uh, or rolling hot inspired by the tet offensive counting the cost inspired by the uh, the fall of the peron regime in argentina but these aren't simply kind of they're not allegories they're not like oh let me tell you what i think about this he's more saying look this is a thing in the human psyche and history and so it tells us about ourselves. And so what if we speculate that we cast it into the far future and speculate upon it as a form of the human story, as an archetype of the human story. He's very, very good at that. Structurally, very good. Prose, very solid. Um, there, there's a massive variety of stories. Then there's novels, there's short stories, there's novellas. Uh, he does a, a variety of things which, um, you know, variety of forms, variety of settings, variety of types of story, peacetime, wartime, um, all of them worth reading. He also, in the first volume of the Collected series, uh, this was in the original collection called Hammer Slammers, uh, he has lots of kind of short documentary pieces about the way the world is, and that is quite effective world building. When I talked about volume one, I did talk about that. Uh, I've talked about that before on my channel. The idea that he world builds in this, um, both immersive, you go into the world, you hear the characters, but also just here is a tiny Wikipedia entry. Uh, will Wikipedia exist in 300 or 400 years? We'll find out. But anyway, that is uh, why I recommend to you, if I recommend to you, how a slam is it's on those bases. Uh, there's a lot more going on here than action sci-fi. Uh, military sci-fi is a really deep and interesting genre and something that, which more people, I think, should should read. Uh, if you've read these books, I'd love to hear your views in the comments. Um, and what other military sci-fi you'd recommend to people, particularly as a kind of starter. Where would you recommend people start with military sci-fi? Anyway, till next time.